This video will include Word Skill Builder Chapter 1 from beginning to end to show you how to download instructions and upload for grading. You will start in your MyTLab account. In your MyTLab account in your course materials, you should see Word Projects and Word Exam folder. You want to click on it, it's a link, and then you want to click on the link IT1010 Word Chapter 1 Skill Builder. And when you do all of your projects, the first thing you want to do is download files. Um, notice right here in the instructions, the first there's instructions down here below. It says for my TLab, download and open the file name Skills Word 01 Greater A2. To get to that file, you must click on Download Files. So that's the first thing I do every time I do a project. Before we open that file, let's talk about the files that are in here. The first one is your instructions. You can click on this green drop down. I'm in the Google Chrome browser, so when I click on that, it's very nice. My file goes into my downloads folder, and I can click on it here to open it. So you can open your instructions and enable editing. And you can print those and look at them, that's what I've done. Or you can snap them over here to the right part of your screen or left if you're a lefty and you can follow the instructions on the screen. I'm going to close those because I don't need them. The second file is that starter file that it tells us to open. The third file here is called Word Chapter 1 Skill Builder Final Results. Well let's take a look at that. This comes with every one of your projects and it's very nice when it comes to your exams. Your skill builders, you get three attempts to get as many points as you can, up to 50. Your exams are 100 points, but you only get one submission. So it's nice to use this final results file. It comes with all of the grader projects, including the exam. When you look at it, it shows you exactly what the file should look like when you're finished. So this is what we're going to produce here in Word Chapter 1 Skill Builder. I'm going to close it. The next file happens to be a file that we will need later. We're going to copy information from this file and paste it to our letter for the second page. You may also see images here, .jpegs. Anytime you see those, I usually download these first before I open my start file. That way I know it's in my downloads folder when I need it and I don't have to come back to the screen. So the next thing we're going to do is open our start file, just second green arrow. This one I'm going to open, so I'm going to click here and open. And enable editing, first thing you want to do. Step one of the instructions tell us to open that file and then we have to save it right away. So they want us to save it last name underscore first name underscore word 01 underscore skill underscore builder. Underscore is done by clicking shift with the hyphen. So I'm going to go back to my file and I'm going to click file save as double click on computer and I want to go to the desktop. The desktop is where I put my IT1010 folder. So I'm going to double click it to open it. And then I have a Word folder. I'm going to double click it. And then I made Skill Builder folders. So I'm going to open my Word Skill Builder. And I'm going to click down here where it says File Name. I'm going to type last name. You type your last name. Underscore first name. You type your first name. WRD01 underscore skill underscore builder. And we've typed the file name and navigated and saved it to our 1010 Word subfolder. We are finished with step one and we're going to step two. Step two would like us to add the file name field to the footer of the document. Now, file name field means you don't type the file name. There are actually fields in the Microsoft Office software. Go back to the file, go right to the top here and double click. That gets you to your header. Notice you've got header footer tools up here in green and we're on the design tab. 
there is an icon near the center here go to footer now I'm in my footer I want to click on document info and click on file name and it automatically inserts the file name that I gave the document scroll to the top of your document double click beneath the dotted line where it says header and we're out of our header footer moving along we have finished step two step three would like us to go to the end of the date line press enter twice to give us two blank lines and we're going to type the inside address the inside address is the address to whom the letter is to so I want to go after my date line hit enter twice and begin to type Ms. A-Line Jefferson enter 7281 East just a capital E no period space Baldwin space capital DR no period for drive Aspen Falls California and the zip code 93463 we are finished entering our inside address. Step four would like us to go back to the top of the document and we're going to apply the no spacing style to our letterhead and to our inside address. So our letterhead is up here. It wants us to select the first three lines. Your letterhead is, to, is who the letter is from, usually a business name or it could be your name and address but we don't want it spread out in between each line. So we go to our home tab, styles group, and click on no spacing, and it moved everything up nice and neat. We're gonna do the same thing to our inside address. All you have to do is select the first two lines and click on no spacing. And we have made our no spacing style. Moving on to step five, they want us to go to our first line of that letterhead and we're going to do some formatting. We're going to change the font to Cambria, the font size to 16, and we're going to set our character spacing to expanded by 1.5. So I'm going to go back to my letter and select just the first line of the letterhead. I want to be at my own home tab, navigate to your font group, click on the instead of Calabri body for the font style we're going to click on the drop down and we're going to go find Cambry instead of 11 for the font size we're going to click on the drop down and click on 16 to get to the character spacing setting we must navigate to the launch button of the font group this is our font group and your launch button is this little arrow in the corner click once on it you will get a font tab and an advanced tab. Click on the advanced tab. You will see character spacing. The middle one says spacing and it's, it's set on normal. Click on that drop down that associates with normal and choose expanded. Now it is expanded by one point. We would like that to be 1.5. So we're going to click our up arrow, one, two, three, four, five, and click OK and we have formatted our letterhead, the first line. Moving on to step six, they would like us to add our salutation, which is Dear Miss Jefferson. So I'm gonna go back to my letter. We wanna click right after the inside address and hit enter once and type Dear Ms. with a period and one space and then Jefferson. And make sure you put a colon at the end. Step number seven would like us to enter a subject line after that salutation. So as soon as right after the colon, hit enter once, type the word subject with a colon, one space, and then we're typing Aspen Meadows, capital M, Meadows Branch Improvements. So we are finished with step seven and let's go to eight. Step eight would like us to copy all of the document text and it happens to be that list document that we put to our download folder when we started this project. Before we do that though, we wanna make sure that we are in the proper place where, to, where we wanna paste that information. 
you want to get to the end of your letter, click right after the R in Director. Hit Enter one time. Now we are at the blank line at the end of the letter. Then you go to Insert Page Break to bring yourself to a second page. We want to go to the Windows Explorer folder right here on our taskbar. And I'm going to Downloads because I know that's where I downloaded that file. And notice the one that has List at the end. Let's open it and enable editing. We want to copy all of the text in this document to our second page of our letter. To select all of the text in this document, the easiest way to do it is with a shortcut key. You want to hold down Control on your keyboard, lower left, CTRL, and hit the A. That selects all of the text in this document. Then we want to go up here and click Copy from our Home tab, Clipboard Group. Close that document. We will not need it again. And then we go back to our letter. We're at our second page. Click on your Home tab and click the Paste button. It's the clipboard right above the word Paste. And now we have all that text as our second page of the letter. And we have finished Step 8. Step 9 would like us to correct our spelling and grammar. Now it does tell us that Aileen and DR are spelled correctly. I move to the top of my document and then I go to review and click on your spelling ABC spelling and grammar. Right away it tells us Aileen spelled wrong but we know it's right so we're going to click ignore. Then it tells us that the DR is wrong but we know it's right so we're going to click ignore. The next item it finds is there is a repeat. There's two twos down here in this paragraph below collection. We want to delete the second two. Click delete. Several is spelled wrong. So from the spelling pane over here, it gives us a lot of selections, but it happens to be that first one. Make sure it's blue and click change. Suitable is spelled wrong. It only gives us one suggestion over here in the spelling pane. So just click Change, and you should get a OK, you're good to go. And that completes Step 9. Step 10, it wants us to use the Synonyms Shortcut Tool, which is fabulous. This is a tool that you will use a lot during your uh, writing your papers for other classes. Uh, it'll widen your vocabulary. You want to double click on the word era in the collection paragraph right here. Then you right click on the word era. And if you go point to synonyms, it will give you several suggestions of other words that you can use. They want us to use period. So we want to click on period. And that is step number 10. Moving along to number 11. Number 11 would like us to move or use cut and paste and we're moving faster checkout subheading. We want to make it come before research stations. So I'm going to go back to my letter. I'm going to select faster checkout with the paragraph that goes with it. I'm going to go to navigate to my home tab and I'm going to click the scissors for cut. Notice that section went away it is up here on this clipboard waiting for us to paste it. But we must place our cursor where we want it to paste. So I'm going to click right before the R in Research Stations and then click that big clipboard. And there you have it. I've got it moved above Research Stations. And that finishes Step 11. Step 12 is another great shortcut tool they want us to use and it's called the Format Painter. Notice on the second page, the first section collection is different from the other three section headings. We want to make these three section headings, children's collection, faster checkout, and research stations, we want to make them just like the word collection. All we have to do is click on the word collection anywhere inside that word, and we're going to use this format painter over here in our clipboard group on our home tab double click the format painter 
and when you move your mouse you'll see that it's now a paintbrush. So we're going to hold down our left button and paint children's collections and paint faster checkout and paint research stations. Wasn't that easy? That's a great tool you may use quite a bit in your future. To get rid of this paintbrush, you just click back on Format Painter again and you get your beam back. And we have finished step 12. We are on step 13 and that's closing the document and submitting it for grading. Now we know we've already saved this document. We've got our name up here at the top. All we have to do is click the close or the X button up here in the far right and make sure you click save and behind that you should come up with this my T lab screen. You want to close this because now we want to upload the file to be graded. So click upload completed file, choose file, Mine happens to go right to my path, 1010 Word, Word SB1. So all I've got to do is double click on that file. And then I want to choose Upload. And it takes about five seconds. And you will get a green check mark up here at the top to tell you that your completed file has been successfully uploaded. You want to go over here to the right and you will see finish and submit for grading. Click on it. This tells you that the maximum score is 50 points. To find out our score, we want to return to course. And hopefully you've gotten a 50 out of 50 in your score. If you have not, anytime uh, when you do your skill builders, you get three attempts to get the highest score you can get. Um, when you do your exam reviews, you get unlimited attempts. Your exam, you only get one attempt, but let me show you how to go look. If you didn't get 50 and you want to submit once or twice again, you want to click on this drop down, view submissions, and over here you can click on your submission. And on the right side, you can kind of scroll down here and it'll tell you what points you missed out of your 50. But my favorite report is this download submission with live comments. If you click on it and open it and enable editing, it'll give you a little history here at the top, some summary of what you did. But you can scroll down. It'll actually show little comment bubbles on the right side if you've missed something. You can click on the comment. Usually it is misspelled. If you've misspelled a word, it will not recognize it. So it would say, does not see Aspen Falls Public Library if you spelled something wrong. And you'll see a little uh, bubble over here. If you don't see your bubbles, go to review and you can say show markup and make sure comments is checked so that you can see your checks or your balloons. Um, you cannot make the changes on this document. It's just a document to show you what you did wrong. So you'd have to close it, close this, close this, go back to your original file that you've got saved in your 1010 folder, and you would open it, make the corrections, close them, and save them. And then you would go back just the way we started. Open it again and upload the completed file. And you can do that three times for your skill builders. And that's the end of skill builder one. Thank you.